Hey everybody, welcome back to Overland Florida. I'm Kevin. It is a beautiful, not so rainy yet, Friday afternoon. It's about one o'clock. I'm out here with Michael and we are in the Hopkins Perry of the Ocala National Forest. And of course we got Michael. He always comes out here with me. He's got his uh, lifted Lexus SUV and I got my little stock Ford Maverick right there. And today, and especially this whole weekend, there is a basically a 100% chance of rain all weekend in Ocala National Forest. And I drove through some thunderstorms and lightning on the way up here from uh, Lakeland, Florida. And it has not started raining here. It's still pretty dry, but we're gonna get quite some uh, rain showers later this afternoon. So we are going to go ahead and set up camp, keep the firewood dry, and wait on everybody else to show up. So we just arrived to our favorite little spot here at Hopkins Prairie. And again, I am really impressed. As many people have come out here and use this, there is no trash. Although someone did cut down a pine tree and they just kind of left it here. Um, so I guess we might as well just cut it up to clean it up. Don't know if we're gonna burn it or not. But uh, Michael's over here, he's got his trailer all set up already. He's got his awning, got some firewood, setting the table up. Gonna cook probably, uh, probably a little bit later we're gonna cook just cause we're gonna give everybody some time to get here. There's my little truck. No wildflowers yet. We were only here probably about a week and a half ago, so I imagine they probably wouldn't grow that fast, but I cannot wait for all the wildflowers to start growing through the prairie. It's just a really beautiful scene to look, wake up to, especially when the sun's coming up. Some new stuff to my truck. I now have an extrusion overland bed rack. It's pretty cool. I put it together at like 3 a.m. With, uh, with my buddy Jesse. Got just the essentials on there for right now. I got some more stuff in my garage, but I was just trying to figure out, um, since this truck is so small and I had so much stuff on my other truck, just where I'm gonna mount everything. We'll go over the bed rack a little bit later, but it is 125 and I haven't eaten since yesterday, since I worked last night, so. What better way to start off a camping trip Whoops. than with a pub sub, some public sweet tea, and some baked lays somewhere. So it's about 7.40 in the evening. We had some people show up. As you can see, the sun's going down over the forest. In the background over here is the prairie. We got Ron. He just showed up with his camper. We got Jillian's forerunner over here and her puppy Barlow. We got Zach and Tracy and their two Huskies. Michael's trailer is right over there. Michael actually left to go meet somebody because it got a little turned around in the forest. Got my little Ford Maverick over there. And I'll show you guys these other vehicles over here in just a little second. Michael coming back from his recon mission. Did you go to the actual campground and study over here? Yep. Oh, uh, that's everybody. It's hard to tell people to get here. Yep. <laughs> hey, what up, man? Finally. I know, right? What's up? Busting out the V8 Dodge Dakota. I know, right? <laughs> you got a camera? I got a camera? <laughs> Where are you guys uh, set up? Where are you guys? Just pick a tree anywhere. He's backing up, though. Pick a tree. Lucky guy. <laughs> So here's Steve's Yukon, brand new, extra large tent. Got the beautiful bright blue forerunner. So it's about 9 p.m. We haven't started cooking yet. Michael just started the fire. Um, I got these two little pork loins that we're gonna cook along with asparagus and everything. Uh, it's gonna take a long time to cook, so hopefully we can get that on the fire before the uh, rain comes. So it's just after 9 p.m. And as you can tell by maybe on the awning right here, 
It is starting to rain again and there's another storm coming. There's a lot of lightning off in the distance, so we're pressed for time. And we haven't even started the cooking process, so Chef Ron here is going to give us a little uh, synopsis of what we're going to eat tonight. Alright, so first off we're going to go ahead and we're going to take these pork loins and we're just going to just toss them on the grill grate. They're going to take like 15 hours to cook. But while we're waiting on those to cook, we're going to go ahead and knock out some jalapeno poppers as always since that seems to be our new thing that we do. And for cream cheese, we have our standard Philadelphia cream cheese. Then over here we have the, which flavor was this? Honey, right? Oh, it's the roasted pecan and sweet honey cream cheese. So we're gonna see how that does with the uh, jalapenos and make like a sweet and spicy jalapeno popper. So let's see how it is. What's this over here? Um, we never cooked this before. No, this is a new thing. Um, if anybody's ever had asparagus before, just leave a comment down below on your review of asparagus and how you feel about asparagus because it's different. It was on sale, so we decided <laughs> to knock it out, try something new for once, and let's see how it is. Well, it was on sale at Publix, which means it was just regular price. It was just not marked up. Correct. And um, then uh, in here is where uh, Ron decides how he's going to season his food. And I think we might go with some Everglade seasoning. Um, I'm not sure either. I can't decide whether I want to utilize the large Everglades seasoning container, one of the smaller Everglades seasoning containers, or even one of the even smaller <laughs> Everglades seasoning containers. So in the last camping video, um, I made this for Ron and showed it to him, and everyone said, you got to tag Everglades seasoning company. So I tagged them on Instagram, and they actually replied, and they actually sent a huge box, almost as big as this case, um, to the house and I didn't bring it today because I knew it was going to be raining and moist and I didn't want all of the seasonings to get opened up and then just you know all like clot together and everything so the next camping trip we go on and it's going to be dry I'm going to bring that box and Chef Ron can open it up and we're going to see all the different seasonings it's a really heavy box so I imagine there's probably like barbecue sauce hopefully and stuff like that in there we can try out but other than that the rain is coming lightning is in the background and we're going to show you guys the fire and we're going to get this stuff prepared I feel like uh, we should have done one in tin foil or something. I guess if, if we lower it, probably won't take that long to cook. No, I won't take the cow tongue too long. <laughs> hey, if you need a raw meat knife, here you go. No, but you better have left me some space on that thing. This takes longer to cook than this. So if we cut off most of the thick parts and leave it a nice thinner part, also too with knives, the back doesn't cut as well as the sharp part. So always make sure you use the sharp part of the knife. He's got his Everglade seasoning. We got some salt and pepper. And you're just gonna put like a half a stick or a third of a stick of butter in there, margarine. Wrap it up. It can be sloppy. It doesn't matter. As long as the butter is going to stay in there and it's going to uh, soften up the asparagus. I know all you hardcore tinfoil cookers out there are going to say one side of the tinfoil is the way that you're supposed to wrap the food and all that good stuff, but I don't really remember it. I've tried both <laughs> ways. I don't notice a difference. If you really notice a difference, make sure you really complain down there in the comment section below. But at the end of the day, tinfoil is tinfoil. So we're going to go ahead and plop these on there, get you some butter, throw a chunk on there, and of course, always use your Everglades. Make sure that you get maximum on the food and also all over the table to just cover your entire workspace, especially if it's not your table. Roll it up nice and tight. Flip it around, hold it over. There you go, just like just pull it. <laughs> so I don't know if you can hear that on the awning, but it's starting to rain. It's finally caught up to us. Michael's steak came off just in time. The pork's still on the grill. Ron's actually gonna wrap that in tin foil, and we can put that directly on the coals. That way, even in the rain, it's still gonna cook. Catching up on this. Hopefully, this rain passes by real quick, and uh, we can finish cooking our appetizers and stuff. The one and only, the famous poppers. I messed up. I was uh, holding them and filling them up with the cream cheese, and then I touched my lips. Uh, <laughs> the shit burned so bad. 
and I hate spicy stuff. But that's these are wearing, so. That's why I'm wearing gloves. Yeah, but these are so good. The cream spicy cheese. How spicy are these? Because I'm the same way. I, I can't. No, no, no. Can handle... No, he takes the yeah. seeds out. So thanks to Alex, he actually picked up the fire pit that was over there in the rain, brought it underneath Michael's awning, and uh, we're gonna continue cooking. We got the jalapeno poppers on there right now. As soon as those are done, we'll throw the asparagus on, and that's the pork right there in the tin foil. So. There's Michael cutting up a steak while everyone just uh, watches the food cook. We've <laughs> 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 got some pork here. <laughs> See how it tastes. So three hours later. It's edible. It's edible. That's all that matters. It is raining. And as you can see, we're still out here enjoying the fire. We just came over here because uh, over here on the grill was where the pork was. But rain still pooling. combination of a bunch of things. I ended up doing 35s, 529s. So you're putting gears, the asparagus gears, and the pork on a tortilla. <laughs> well, you know what? We don't have plates because we're really unprepared campers. But I had tortillas in my truck. So we're just going to just make this. But do you have edible plates? I'm going to get plates. <laughs> so this we is have a, plates now. So this is actually an edible <laughs> eco-friendly option so just send it, you know? <laughs> you might be onto something now, Ron. You just invented the asparagus wrap. <laughs> so there's the prairie and as you can see, it is still raining and it's actually gonna be raining probably most of the day Saturday tomorrow too. Taking two different weekends to try to get it all. With a powered jump drive. Not, yeah, but I, I think the problem is is I'm only gonna be able to get like X amount and then they're gonna have to expose different parts of it. So it's about 9 a.m. on Saturday and it rained all night long. There's a bunch of puddles now where the fire pit once was. And as you can see, not much of a sunrise. Still a very beautiful, peaceful area. And it's starting to rain again already. So everyone's starting to wake up. And slowly but surely, we're going to start making some breakfast. I'm just going to eat some fruit real quick. And uh, hopefully before everyone packs all their stuff up, I'll show you uh, a few different sleeping arrangements. So there's really no wrong way to sleep. You can sleep in the back seat of your truck. You can sleep on a ground tent. You can sleep in the bed of your truck. You can make a trailer, pull it behind your vehicle. You can sleep on top of your vehicle in a rooftop tent. Or Kevin arrived at like 1.30 this morning, you can even convert a van, sleep in a van. And of course we got another rooftop tent over here. But see all the water? This is the fire pit last night. My chair's still there. So if you remember in our last camping trip video, our friend Kevin from Sarasota showed up driving a rail buggy all the way on the interstate and uh, Ron actually got him this uh, this rack right here but uh, in the last video Kevin just had it ratchet strapped here so he could bring it back home but now he's got it mounted so he can put his camping gear up there so he doesn't have to tow it behind his van which is parked over there now so here it is VW rail buggy doom buggy I got all kinds of different names for him but this one's uh, pretty cool what sets this one different from the other ones is it has a fiberglass body, which it doesn't really, uh, not too common on them, I guess. But it is 10.09 in the morning. It's not drizzling anymore, but around noon, the rain and the storms are gonna pick back up. So it's about 11.30 in the morning. A couple people are still packing up. The rest of them are already packed up and they've started their trail riding endeavor. They are on their way to Rodman Dam in Ocala. They're gonna meet over there, do some trail riding. But I wanted to show you guys my bed rack. So the other night, uh, my buddy Jesse and I put this together in my driveway at like 2 a.m., put it on the truck. And I've kind of just been messing around with just mounting some stuff to see where I'm gonna want it. I'm not gonna carry gas, so I'm gonna get rid of this Roto Packs right here. I'm gonna end up getting two 
water cans. So instead of having two gallons of gas and two gallons of water, I'm going to have a total of four gallons of water. So um, I don't know. Out of all the years I've ever been camping or just off-roading, whatever, I have never ran out of gas and no one I've ever been with has ever run out of gas, especially in Florida. You're never more than 30 minutes away from a gas station, so rarely do you ever um, find anybody that's actually run out of gas. It's nice to have if you have a generator. It's nice to have gas, but especially on a truck like this that's known for having really good fuel mileage and I can go 400 miles on a tank, um, there's no reason to carry gas. So, not going to be carrying any gas. At this point, it's kind of just tacky. I think to just always have a gas can on there. So um, I think these roto packs right here, I'm going to keep these mounted here. This right here is a Harbor Freight rifle case. It's actually really nice. And the cool thing about this is it is the perfect size. I kind of just have a bunch of miscellaneous stuff in here right now. But a Coleman stove, the $30 Coleman stove from Walmart fits in there perfect. Then I just have bug spray. I have a 12 volt shower head and stuff like that in there. So just kind of threw that up there just to see if. I'm gonna like that there. So let's talk about rooftop tents for a second. I went out and I bought a Smitty built Overlander rooftop tent specifically for this bed rack for my Ford Maverick build. And I was gonna put it on there, come out and make a bunch of videos with it, you know, good content for the truck and just the Ford Maverick community and everything like that. And my buddy Jesse and I put this rack together about two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning one morning. And, uh, as we got it put on the truck, I started bringing out all the other stuff out of the garage, roto packs, awning, shower room, um, storage bins like this, and just all the other junk that I have that was on my Toyota Tacoma um, to put on this bed rack. And we started digging the tent out of the truck. I'm sorry, we started digging the tent out of the garage. And the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what? We're gonna dig this tent out that's just been sitting in the garage. And I'm gonna put it on the truck, bolt it down, which is gonna take probably, you know, 25 minutes all together from start to finish I'm gonna come out here for this trip right now and go camping and then Sunday I'm gonna drive home I'm gonna to have to do the reverse I have to unbolt everything I'm gonna lift the tent off the truck store it in the garage and uh, now I've owned probably four or five rooftop tents and it's kind of like a love-hate relationship if you're gonna leave it on the truck or leave it on the vehicle like I had one on my Jeep for at least a year and um, it wasn't that bad. I used the tent almost twice a week for the whole year that I owned it, even during the summer and everything like that. But when it comes to this truck, I don't want to leave the rooftop tent on there. Um, the whole point of this truck is to get good fuel mileage. So if I have this huge bulky rooftop tent and I'm losing three, four miles to the gallon, um, that defeats the whole purpose of buying the truck. So my plan was to just use the rooftop tent on specific camping trips where I'm going to be out in Ocala or going uh, down to the Keys or you know up to North Carolina, Georgia and uh, trips like that. But the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what, I got to ask for help every time I take this rooftop tent off the truck. So I got to have someone step outside or call a friend, hey, can you stop by the house, you know, help me lift this rooftop tent off and put it in the garage. And then once it's in the garage, then you got to store it. So then it just takes up room in the garage and then it just adds to clutter and then you start using the rooftop tent in the garage as like a shelf so you just pile more junk on top of it so i don't know i kind of just had to make a decision right then i said you know what i'm not gonna put this rooftop tent on the truck i actually took a picture of it put it on facebook marketplace and in the morning when i woke up uh, someone came to the house and bought it so i got rid of it that fast and i'm not gonna have a rooftop tent on my bed rack so i think i have another one of these in my shed so I think I'm gonna have two cases in the middle for storage I'm gonna have my ARB awning over here I have a shower room that I'm gonna put on the truck or on the on the rack here so I think the shower room is gonna go on the left side awning on the right side um, I got my shovel of course I got my storage stuff and then I, I mean I don't know what I'm gonna put over here yet um, this truck's kind of just gonna be like the bare minimum so there's not a whole lot I'm gonna need the shovel comes in handy and since I don't have any other really recovery gear I'll probably get a set of uh, knockoff max tracks or something like that, traction boards. But uh, in the bed, I haven't made my drawers yet, but I got all my junk. Always, always take your trash with you when you go camping or find more trash if there's trash at your campsite. But besides that, of course, I got my refrigerator. I got all my little cases from Harbor Freight. Got my power bank. And then I got a wet chair. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> Nothing like some garbage juice. That is disgusting. <laughs> oh well, I'm going home to take a shower anyway. But uh, other than that, that's that's all I've done. Look at all that garbage juice. <laughs> anyway, 
that is all I've done to the truck so far. That's really all I plan on doing unless some other companies reach out and they want me to test their products for uh, whatever people come up with the Ford Maverick. There's no lift kit on the truck or anything like that. This is how you buy it from the Ford dealership minus the rack and the bed cover. So on that note, I think my rooftop tent days are over. Um, like I said, if I wanted to keep the rooftop tent on there the whole time and I lost three to four miles to the gallon, I might as well have just kept my built Tacoma and just lived with a few mileage that thing got. So the whole point of this truck is to maintain a really good fuel mileage, uh, fuel economy, so I can go on some, uh, some more trips and just save money. So I don't want to add a bunch of stuff to this truck that's just going to take away from the fuel mileage. So that's probably one of the only things that's holding me back from getting a lift kit. They do make a two inch lift for this truck, um, which would be really nice to have ground clearance. But um, I, don't, I don't know. I'm kind of torn. I don't really want to do anything else to the truck other than just have the bed rack to carry my camping supplies and make camping a little more comfortable. But outside of that, the truck's fine. As you can see, I've been out here in Ocala and I've done the same trails that I would be doing if I had my Toyota Tacoma. So um, it does limit you on some things, but at the same time, you got a fair trade. I'm getting 30 something miles to the gallon on the interstate. Uh, you're not getting that on some Tacoma with 35s and heavy bumpers and a winch and all the gear that's in the bed of the truck. 